Welcome to the Value Proposition by the Fitness Business Podcast. I'm your host, Sarah Pellegrino. The Value Proposition was created specifically for industry suppliers to showcase the value that they bring to health club owners and operators beyond their product or service. Today, we're going to be learning the value proposition for going digital with IntelliVideo. IntelliVideo is the global leader in digital fitness experiences, and they can help you create custom on-demand and live streaming options for your health club or fitness studio. Joining us today, we have Adam Zaitsev, President and CEO, Ashley Podol, Chief Marketing Officer, and Shannon Fable, Director of Content and Production Strategy. Adam is gonna start us off today with our three real minutes, or as we like to say, three RM, to give us some insight into IntelliVideo. Adam, thank you for joining us today. What does IntelliVideo offer fitness operators, and what does that offering entail at a high level? Yeah, well, thanks for having us, Sarah. We appreciate it. We're, we're excited to be here. Uh, we're a big fan of the show. You know, first time caller, long time listener, so we're excited. Uh, I excited love it. Much. <laughs> so anyway, listen, in Televideo, we are uh, an on-demand live streaming and digital platform. And, and really the result of our, our, our company and our product creates a, a really robust digital fitness subscription offering that helps gyms and health clubs complement their brick and mortar facilities and services, right? And so our mission is what we live and breathe every day here is we want to help them hybridize their offering and kind of compete with these disruptive direct to consumer fitness offerings that are really coming out there, but do it in a hyper local fashion. And I think we do that, you know, we, we talk about an elevator pitch and what's our value and all that, but we really do that in three ways. We do that with uh, technology and services and content expertise. And so our technologies are our platform, our robust platform integrated into the fitness ecosystem. Our services are our client success team and our marketing success team. So you can't just launch this. Uh, you actually have to launch it and then help people get on board and keep them on board, your members. And then the third thing really is our content strategy, right? A, a digital platform is, is only as good as the content you put on there. So we work with our customers and we help them build a really long-term, stable, robust, and engaging digital fitness content plan. I love it. Can't wait to dive into that today. I know we'll be talking about the three pillars a little bit more later on. So thank you so much. Now, Adam, why does IntelliVideo exist in health and fitness? Yeah, I mean, I think club members, the members of all the fitness operators out there, they've been going digital and they've had it in their hands for a long time. And uh, I think we've all seen the two or $3 billion in the last six months that was invested into direct to consumer digital fitness, right? So there's lots of options out there, lots of money being spent and lots of ways for a health club operators member to be, to, to be disrupted. So we exist to help fitness operators combat those direct disruptive you know fitness products and help them win in this space because we help them leverage what these other direct-to-consumer products don't have and that's that hyper local advantage and so for example the hyper local advantage it's really built around the people inside the clubs our team members uh, and the advantage they have of being able to build that very in-person personal relationship with members as they embark on that fitness journey, you know, which we all know is an emotional, personal decision. And it's IntelliVideo's job, it's our reason for existing, if you will, to help fitness operators leverage technology to extend that personal trust-based relationship into the digital realm and help them win and help them win with a really hybridized, hyper-local, personal fitness experience. Awesome. Thank you so much, Adam. And, you know, to you personally, what does success look like for you with IntelliVideo? You know, we, we, I mean, every company, every business, every leader measures success differently. I think for me, uh, at a high level, I think IntelliVideo, having us looked at by fitness operators around the world as that really truly trusted value-based partner that helped them not only survive the pandemic and everything that's happened that's one thing but more importantly help them thrive afterwards and i think everyone i think is we talk to all the time realizes that digital and hybridization it's here to stay even after a vaccine after all the things that happen in this world and so you know fitness operators they exist to serve members they exist to serve them help them through that fitness journey achieve their health and wellness goals and even though we're not there every day we're not in the clubs and we're not the operators ourselves if we can help these operators uh, meet their members where they want to exercise through our platform and our services um, with this really hybridized, hyper-local fitness experience I just mentioned. Yeah. And to me, 
until video actually does become a small part of that successful journey, that fitness journey they embark on. And, and that's success to me. And that's something that we can certainly be proud of and hang our hat on. I love that. And it's so important. I think we've all learned that lesson this year, right? It's one thing to be a fitness operator, but mm -hmm. technology and going virtual and you know, that may not be everybody's cup of tea. So having a partner like IntelliVideo is really important. So I know our listeners and viewers are super excited to learn more from you all. So thank you for the 3RM, beautiful introduction to what IntelliVideo does specifically for health and fitness. Um, Adam, you and I spoke on the three pillars of IntelliVideo, the first being technology. So you mentioned that your team has the best in-class platform enabling fitness operators to quickly go digital. With that being said, what differentiates IntelliVideo's technology from your competitors? Yeah, and that's a good question. I think as technology providers, we can sometimes get caught up in the old zeros and ones and who's got this feature and who's got that feature. And that's important to some extent. But really, I think I can hit this in really four key areas. I think the, the first and foremost for us is our integration into the fitness industry technology ecosystem. And we're focused on a lot of native integrations into things like bonus sale and member management and rewards platforms and things like that. And we differentiate ourselves by ensuring that we become a seamless part of the existing tech stack and ecosystem that clubs already have in place, right? We've got to get in there seamlessly. I think the second thing for me and the, the, the key differentiating areas of our platform is our marketing and our CRM and our other data integrations. We've got real-time integrations into seven and counting uh, of the industry's most utilized CRM, marketing automation tools, and, and really this gives these systems live access to things that are happening in our platform, which helps our customers run their business a lot better. I think the third thing will be our app suite. Uh, we really work hard to meet a club's members where they want to exercise, uh, whether it's on their phone one minute or screencasting that to their TV the next or on their Apple TV or their Roku or just on a web browser on their tablet in a hotel because they're traveling, wherever they want to exercise, uh, we, we, we can work hard to meet them there. And even integrating into things like the most popular white label club apps that are out there too. We've got some of those going on and that's a key piece. And I think lastly is just you know, leveraging our platform flexibility. We started out, we've been doing this for almost eight years now, so we're not new on the block. We've built a really robust enterprise platform. And, and some of our customers are some of the largest fitness brands in the world. So they have hundreds of locations and hundreds of thousands of users and millions of transactions happening. And so in order to meet the needs of those customers, we had to build a really robust platform. And so I think for us now, all our customers that are local or regional or even national in any way, shape or form, any size or scope, they can take advantage of that. And they can reap the benefits of our enterprise platform and the flexibility we built into it to really create a truly enterprise video on demand live streaming, digital platform for their members, hyper-locally, even just in a small local area. Love it. And one key word you said there was seamless, right? We want all of our systems to be working with seamless integrations. So that's really important. That's right. And to that note, Adam, can you elaborate more on IntelliVideo's integrations and why they're important when launching a digital platform? Yeah, I think, you know, if you look at the integrations, uh, let's, for example, I'll start with point of sale. Um, you know, the staff in the club, they live and breathe in this every day. You train them on how to use your point of sale system, how to run transactions through it. So if we are going to make a, a seamless transition into the hybrid world, we as a provider and our customers as operators, um, they're going to have to be able to transact in the same place that they were transacting in club, but for digital, right? In the same commerce type environment. So that's really important. You don't want to have to retrain them and have things in, in money transacting in different areas. So they need to be able to easily upgrade someone's membership to include digital or add a service add on item uh, so they can also have digital and they're being charged a little extra for that. And I think wherever they run their normal revenue cycle management for in their club, they need to run their entire business on including digital. Uh, which is really important. And on the other, the other piece, you know, when you're building um, this hybrid fitness experience, it's, it's not just a build it and they'll start using it type of thing. It doesn't work that way, right? So members need to be made aware of the new platform. They need to know they can work out in club and at home with the same people they trust every day. And they need to know that they need to be brought along that journey. So having that real-time kind of live data integrations with things like a HubSpot or, a, or an active campaign or other CRM and marketing automation platforms out there, it allows customers to build these acquisition journeys so they can get their members to learn about these platforms and get them on them. 
And then more importantly, it allows them to keep them on them with retention journeys and engagement journeys and things like that. So they stick around on the digital and they stick around in a hybrid environment, which of course increases that lifetime value in the club and out of the club. And then lastly, really the integrations, it's data. It's all about data. So having an open API, which we really work hard to do for lots of connections to other type of platforms, for example, to like a, a BI or AI platform from a, a Scipio or someone like that, where clubs can take that data and really see how their members are using the platform. What type of workouts are they engaged in? What duration, what coaches, what trainers, what time of day? And they can take that and so many other data points and help them kind of learn from it and then take automated action, for example, off that data set to create new value for their members, increase retention, boost revenue, et cetera. I love it. And speaking of revenue, Adam, you and I were chatting a bit about this. I'm curious if you can share with our listeners. So let's say someone's listening to this and they're considering bringing on a digital fitness partner. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they're wondering, hmm, do I keep this just, it's an add on, it's, you know, I'm going to charge more for it. Do you see most clubs just including it and in what their membership price already is? Are you seeing now because of COVID-19, are you seeing a virtual just fitness option? Um, elaborate a little bit on that and let's see if we can give some of our owners and operators some ideas here. Yeah, I think we're seeing, I think to answer your question quickly, all of the above. So we are seeing a lot of our customers include the digital on demand, for example, and the video on demand library and the workouts in their upper tier memberships, right? It drives people to that memberships. They tend to engage and stay longer and it increases that lifetime value. So that's number one. We are seeing that. Number two, we do see them looking at just a, a small, you know, five or eight or nine dollar service add on item in the club. So if you've got people on your other memberships types, you can sell them a service add-on, giving you, giving you a reason to talk to them again and engage with them. And you can sell them the service add-on and get them engaged in the digital platform. And then we are seeing people with virtual memberships. We're seeing people just go out there on their join online and have a virtual only. And that's driving a virtual membership into the point of sales system, which talks to our system and, and turns them on. And they're using that to engage people in their hyper-local community with their team, with their fitness offerings, even if they're maybe not quite ready to get back into the club right now, but now they've got someone paying them money, whereas before they didn't, and they've got a perfectly warm lead who, when this all dies down and people are getting more comfortable again, they've been engaged with their company and they're in their club already, virtually, and now it'll be a lot easier to become a hybrid member, both in club and virtually. I love it. It's a lot easier to walk back in a club when you've been using the program than walking in cold. So that's great. Thank you so much for elaborating on that question, Adam. Um, and lastly, and you know, in your eyes, what advantage do you think the IntelliVideo technology platform and the three pillar differences you alluded to earlier offers to gym, health club, and fitness operators? You know, we, get, we do get a lot of feedback from our customers on this. And what's the advantage? You know, from you helped save our business during COVID to you helped us two years ago get onboarded and go digital. Now we had a leg up. But I think everything we hear from our clients, uh, the advantage of our technology platform, specifically how it was designed and the three pillars we talked about, uh, really helps them leverage a well thought out, smartly executed, and really kind of an innovative technology adoption strategy. And again, to extend that personal and that emotional trust-based relationship. That's what they keep saying to us. Maybe not quite in those exact words, but they say, look, you guys helped us take technology and carefully adopt it, and it makes it feel like our members are with us both in the club and out of the club, and their team members that support them are with them in the club and out of the club. And, and I think you know, it's, it's kind of an in-between space for these operators, right? And I think our advantage for them is that we can quickly, with technology and the services, help them win in this in-between space um, and leverage and, and that hyper-local advantage that they have. And I think it helps make their clubs and their people kind of feel like it's part of the technology, which in turn makes the technology feel just like a normal, everyday, seamless part of that local relationship. And that's how we're helping them create this truly hybrid, trust-based fitness experience and, and really helping them win. It makes you such a valued partner too. That's wonderful. Well, thank you so much for sharing all of that with us, Adam. We really, really appreciate it. And Ashley, I'm coming your way. I, I understand that when a health club owner operator partners with IntelliVideo, they partner with client success and your marketing teams to launch and grow their digital platform that they're creating, right? So 
tell us all about pillar number two of IntelliVideo, which is marketing success and services. Adam mentioned that IntelliVideo got started with client success. Why is that? And what other areas do you guys serve? Yeah, you know, I think we spun up our services side of the business because really big brands were ready and willing, understood that consumers were already at home working out, even when they weren't in the studio or club. And so the, the brands had the bandwidth, had the resource, and really the methodology to go online. And very quickly, you know, we and they realized, hey, we know brick and mortar really well. Um, but digital is just a different core competency. And so um, they were ready and willing, and we had to learn quickly together. It's been about four years ever since. So we spun up services, as Adam was mentioning, it's not just the technology. You know, I think we really found that um, you need a, a partner in this industry and a partner that has the marketing expertise, the content know-how, because it is a different medium. You're not teaching in front of people anymore. You're online and trying to convey the same value um, in a completely different form. So, you know, we, we spun up client success and, and more of a weekly touch point with, with a business partner in that sense. And then very much so from a marketing and a content expertise to help round out the offering and not just, you know, have a seamless platform that does work with all those integrations, but really um, create a robust product offering to complement, you know, your great in club experience. So um, yeah, that's, that's kind of the, the genesis of our client success, marketing success and content expertise. I love that so much because it's not something that you can just bring on board and then boom, it's there and it just exists and rock, you know, rocks. Like I wish we could build and they will come, but it doesn't yeah. always work that way. <laughs> right. Absolutely not. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, you know, on that note, let's talk marketing success specifically. What type of marketing support do you offer your clients? Yeah. And you know, when I was thinking about our business, we, we really love threes. So we have three pillars and certainly in the marketing success side of things, we have three more things. So um, we have, we really approach, you know, our partnership and specifically the marketing support in, in three areas. So it's, it's onboarding, it's a launch um, and it's a, it's a growth phase and the onboarding. It is a project. It's, you know, you have to spin up some really good content. You really have to understand how to position that to your members um, and then, and very much so grow the business, not just acquire um, or, you know, grow your member adoption, but acquire new people as well. And so we approach marketing in that sense. Um, it's three different stages and we support really the acquisition strategy and the retention side of that too. And I guess this is a bonus fourth. Um, we also brought on uh, advertising management and execution in house too. And that was because we saw across our portfolios, uh, partner agencies that would place ads. We, we knew that there were templated standard campaigns. We wanted all of our clients to run and have access to and make sure to implement in their work. So uh, we do also manage um, and place media buys in house uh, for that reason. We have a really, you know, we have a niche, we have a specialty and we see what campaigns across the board work really well. And we make sure we bring those to our clients, even if they're still working with a third party. So from a, from the advertising perspective, we run that top to bottom in house. And then again, that, that launch campaign, kind of your go to market and or these days go to member um, adoption is, is pretty key. And we know some of those best practices across the channels, you know, an omni channel approach. So whether it's email or advertising, your organic social activity or, you know, your private member forum, um, we have developed the blueprint, I think, to in order to launch successfully to your members and to new markets and then also retain them, keep them engaged and um, attract new members that way, too. That's wonderful. That is great. Thank you so much. And, you know, Ashley, walk us through what the partnership with IntelliVideo would look like from beginning to end for one of your clients. So maybe just, I know you gave us the three, uh, the onboarding, the launch and the growth. So maybe just give us specific examples of each piece. Yeah, absolutely. So we do, we start with a, a quick strategy um, phase where we understand what works really well for you. Um, Technically, you know, we understand kind of who we need to integrate with and, and who you're already working with and make sure that it's seamless from a technology phase in that ecosystem. And we do look at your communication plan and what already works really well from that standpoint. How do you talk to your membership? What's the most dynamic social channel you leverage? And then certainly the content, you know, what's what content do you already have? If you don't have content, we're certainly going to tackle that area um, for this new medium. So we do have this strategy phase where we onboard people like that. And then from an onboarding stage, it is a bit of a project. So again, why our services exist, we really, you know, walk you step by step through that process. Um, and so we make sure that you launch with a really streamlined website that you probably already have a domain, you already have your current website. And so we make sure that you know, for instance, those two spaces look like the member never left. We do have website templates and things to help clubs, you know, just 
place the graphics and copy in um, and go. And we're going to make sure that that looks really like, you know, you never left that club's environment on, on the website. Um, so we'll make sure it's seamless technically, um, that we've got a really solid communication plan, um, how to bring this to market, how to really um, convey the value that you worked really hard to build and why this is complementary to the in-person experience um, and, you know, can be used on the, the off days that you don't go in the club or now, for instance, um, you can stay in touch with members as doors are closed. Um, and then the growth phase and, you know, and it's not just getting to market and that build and they will come. Hopefully I've seen that one time um, for, across all of our brands. I've seen that happen where they built it, they turned it on and people flooded in, but that is, that's lucky. Um, so, you know, from a growth phase perspective, we're going to make sure, you know, any new technical initiatives um, that we can work and, and make sure that we're capturing all that data behind the scenes, even to make sure that you can measure how successful this business is. So any new initiatives, we'll make sure to fold into the growth plan from a marketing standpoint. You know, if we started with some really um, base channels for you, we want to really mix in some more um, that we know are good plays across the board. Um, so if you aren't already on Instagram, you know, we'll help you kind of roll in that channel once you are live and continuing to grow that way. And then from a content perspective, you know, you'll never get content right the first time. You're going to have your best first guess at understanding what your members really want. And then you'll learn um, an absolute ton, certainly in the first three months, let alone the first year um, in this hybrid model. And so then from that content perspective, we're going to make sure that, you know, we're providing that customer feedback that we're hearing, whether it's automated or we're running marketing campaigns with you to understand that feedback. So whether you need more variety in time or more intensity levels or different trainers, we're going to help you understand um, in that growth phase, what's really sticking, make sure it's mixed in your marketing and then that you make more of that. So that product just keeps getting better and better from launch date and forward. I love that so much. And I'm assuming you mentioned the social media platform. If you don't have it, we'll help you create it. I'm assuming the same goes for a website, right? If they're, you know, if a club just has not been utilizing a website, let's say, yeah. right? Is that something you guys can shed some light on and give recommendations and help create? Yeah, absolutely. Whether it's our website template that you're taking advantage of, or, you know, we should roll up this existing domain because you are more than just this digital offering. Typically you do have this really premium in-person experience, or you might have product, you know, product bundles that you're selling alongside. So we really work hard to dial up. Um, yeah. Those web presences that eventually, you know, we don't have to cover everything right away. We can have a really good launch plan and then fold in some of those new mediums that you want to take advantage of to continue to build a business. So it's social channels or it's um, the website specifically or any other kind of new initiative. Um, we've, we've seen it. And so we can absolutely walk you through um, spinning those up. There's so much value in that. Cause I feel, you know, we see, see chains, we see boutique, you know, that are always so good at digital content, but there still are a lot of club owners and operators out there. that they're, they're just terrified by it. And so to know that you're partnering with Intellivideo and you're getting that step-by-step -step help, cause right. It's, okay, we're going to go digital, but we need a website to do that. And then right. I'm assuming it's layers, right? You can take it in layers and okay, yeah. we accomplished the website growth. Now let's look at social channels and really sprucing that up. So. Absolutely. It's, you know, I would never say, I would never recommend a marketing funnel that only has advertisements <laughs> at every step of that funnel. It's just, it's not the way we get information anymore, you know, not just through ads, but those ads are going to have emails play off of them and they're going to see an organic social post. And it really is a dynamic experience that you have to tackle um, and mix into um, to that fold. So you can reach new people, reach your members where they actually are consuming that and make sure that kind of your total audience um, is spoken to and not just one channel. That's awesome. Ashley, thank you so much. That was really valuable content and very, very helpful for someone that's wondering what else Intellivideo does, right? That's what we're trying to answer here today. So thank you so much. Absolutely. And we've, we've set Shannon up perfectly. <laughs> to bring yeah. her I think we have. That's right. <laughs> All right. Last but certainly not least, we're going to learn how Intellivideo helps owners and operators create community and loyalty through content right? We've talked about the technology. We've talked about the marketing piece. Let's talk about the content, what we're actually putting forth. So Shannon, I'm so excited for you to share with us that third pillar of Intellivideo, which is content strategy. So how should club operators decide what content they will provide with their digital solutions? Absolutely. Great question. So as Adam mentioned uh, way back, um, you know, it's this hybridization model. They have to start with their why. 
And they kind of look at it in three different ways. A lot of them come to us thinking, is this just going to be a replacement for right now or a Band-Aid solution because everyone's at home or people are afraid to come back in. So I need something so they can do instead of. We want to move them away from that being their why because we know that the opportunity is so much bigger than it just being a replacement. And if you're going to put resources, both time and money into this, let's, let's make it amplify what you're doing. At the opposite end of that spectrum, they see these, you know, direct to consumer products that are just doing the virtual play and they get a little nervous about, I know we talk about, we have to compete with them, but I mean, when, when they really start to think about how am I going to compete with a Peloton? They get extremely nervous. So we quickly redirect them from you. You're making sure that you have something that people can take hold of that know your gym and do it in a hyper local way, but you don't have to be them either. So we want them to hone in on this hybridization, as I mentioned. So it's an and, not an or. It's an amplification of what you do, not a replacement of what you do. And when we look at it, hybridization, then they start going down this path of, okay, well, what does that mean for us? Does it mean I just take what we're doing live and put it online? Is it just the group fitness or is it personal training as well? How do I leverage my talent? So we have a series of questions and auditing discovery that we do to really hone in on what are you doing well in person? What do you want to reflect online? And how do those two worlds complement each other with also an eye to what do you have available with regards to resources? So we do start with that why. We start digging into the how, and we have to, of course, wrap it up in what they have available to make that happen. So that's where it all gets started. I love the conversation around, do we bring group X? Do we bring personal trait? That's, I mean, are you see like, if you had to, you know, look at all clubs that you're working with, mm -hmm. what percentage would you say are not just doing group fitness, but they're all, they're adding all of it. It's interesting. Every club is different. Okay. It's not one size fits most. Right. And, and a lot of it has to do with it. And, and I know we'll probably talk about this more, but what are you known for? I think a lot of clubs think maybe they're known for group fitness, but maybe they're known more for personal training. So we actually have to shed light on that. And, you know, you've been in the business a long time. You come from a lineage of uh, club people. And many times group fitness just gets shoved in, in the back corner and we know it's doing its job, but we trust that everyone back there has it under control. And sometimes we don't look at it in conjunction with the rest of the ecosystem of all the other things that are happening inside the club. So that's where we have to start. It's like, let's take a look at what was happening before COVID. Not right now, but let's go back to the metrics prior to how much money were you bringing in on personal training? How many different trainers do you have? Do they have specific niches? Do they do small group training? What do you want to amplify when people come back in? Do you need them to get sticky with your personal trainer so you can build back up that revenue? Are they doing okay in this time? Did group fitness fall off a cliff? Are they holding steady? Do you care when they come back? So I, I know you want a direct answer and so does every club operator, but I mean, this is a great reason why you partner with a group that has this expertise because it is not one size fits all and you've got to have the people that ask you the right questions and you get really reflective about what was happening before and what you want to happen in the future and what you can pull off right now. I think that's a great point, Shannon. I love your use of the word amplify because that's, yeah. that, that just, that's, a, that's a great word to use for that. So thank you. Now okay. we're talking about content here. So how can club operators pull their content plans together when launching digital solutions? Sure. So like you said, we start with these conversations, lots of discovery, lots of self-reflection, but then you do have to nail down what your budget is. And that's sometimes a, a, a scary thing. You know, what are you going to spend right now for an ROI in the future? So we talk them through through those budgetary constraints and we have to look at it in four different areas. So I know Ashley said we're big on threes. I'm big on T's. We do timetable, tools, team, and talent. So because a lot of times they're just thinking about, okay, what is it going to cost me to film this and edit it? And what do I have to pay my teachers or my instructors or my trainers? And it actually is more than that. So we've got to figure out timetable. Are you going to do video on demand, live stream, combination of both, all your own content? Can we leverage some third-party content that we have access to that we can supplement what you do well? And again, amplify that. Mm -hmm. Then we have to figure out when, how often. So once we start plugging in those pieces of data, then we can go to the tools. All right. Are you going to be able to pull that off on your own? So do you need to invest in the cameras and the lighting and the music, et cetera? Or do we want to hire a third-party company to do it? Do you want to hire the third party company to kick you off? And then you eventually transition to doing it on your own or, or what's that combination? Cause that's going to change your budget too. Mm -hmm. Then we look at the people, team and talent. So the people behind the camera and in front, and this is usually where they make 
um, I'm not going to say the biggest error, but maybe potentially the biggest oversight. They think just about the people in front of the camera playing all the parts. And we have to treat these as they're going to work together very closely, but talent in front of the camera is very different than the talent you need behind the camera. And if you ask those in front of the camera to do behind the camera, you're going to burn them out really, really quickly. And you're going to be back to square one. So we take them through like in a real big, you know, DVD production, like maybe what I would have done back in the day with, with Bosu or Schwinn or one of those guys, like who are all the players in the studio that are working pre-production, production, post-production? Post -production? What are their responsibilities? Why is that job important? Who could do those for you? Or do you need to outsource it? Like we mentioned, who's going to create the programs and then we go to the talent how are you going to incentivize these people that have been at home that maybe you had to furlough and you weren't able to engage with for the last nine months how are you going to appeal to both their pocketbook and their ego how are you going to get them back in front of people so they feel like they're making a difference because we know I, I weren't I did not get into a job to make millions dancing around in spandex it gives me something else. So, so how am I going to get that? Because they figured out how to get that while they were gone. How do we leverage what they were doing, bring it back in? And then how do we make it lucrative enough for them that they'll put, because I know no one believes this, but it takes more to do it to camera than it does in person. Mm -hmm. It takes more. You cannot pay them what you were paying them to walk into a class at 530 on a Monday afternoon with 50 people in there screaming, yelling, yahooing, and, and do that for video on demand content where they're filming 30 pieces of content every quarter. So, so much to think about when they pull their content plans together, but we have a playbook that we walk them through that breaks down all four of these categories and helps them uh, figure out those steps and, and which decisions they have to make first in lockstep to produce and, and get launched on time. Wow. Okay. Shannon, you have just unpacked yeah. so much information <laughs> for us. I have two follow-up questions from your answer. So, the first thing you said, and it made me sweat a little because I'm thinking, okay, I'm a club owner that now just had to become a production studio, right? So cameras, mm -hmm. equipment, is that something that you either sell or can help the club owner send them the link, like purchase this camera, purchase this tripod? Is that something you guys help with? So we anticipate your pain because it makes us sweat too. Um, <laughs> and I know how hard it is. So yes. Yeah. We, so we've pulled together. I mean, one, we have people that we can provide to you that can do it all for you. Perfect. And even if it's just, we do it until you get to X number of pieces of content and then we train your team to then go do it, got that handled. But it doesn't have to be scary. We have the good, better, best packages. We don't personally sell it, but we can walk you through, all right, if this is your budget, let's go for good. You need this type of camera, click here, go buy it at Amazon. Here's the better, here's the best. And we can mix and match. So it's like, you know, which it's dialing up which levers and dialing down which levers and then managing expectations in reality. If you're going to do this this is what you're going to get. And this is where Ashley's team then swoops in and we see how that work is performing and you either need to turn it up a notch or you can keep going where you are. But yeah, we've got that all dialed in. We can give you, here's the good, better, best package. This is what you need. Help you with the music, help you with the editing, all of that. I love it. And the content that is produced is that I know that you can do live streaming. I'm assuming there's a content library so that members can go back and do a formal workout. Am I correct in saying that? Yes, and I would say that is the biggest misnomer, I believe. People that are digital first know that video on demand is king. Live streaming is extra credit. And I, I think they take their cues from what's happening in person and they think that the most important aspect of what their group fitness and personal trainers bring to the table is that live in-person connection and it's not. It's the way they make them feel when they're exercising, whether it is on demand or live streaming. You cannot do live streaming the way Peloton does it for the rest of eternity. And once you get into this game, you can't get out of it if you're promising your members to do it. So you've got to figure out what, what is that healthy balance. So I guess to go back and answer a little bit more succinctly, there should be video on demand. That should be a ton of your content. And then we help you pepper in live streaming where it makes the most sense. Beautiful. Thank you yeah. so much, Shannon. All right, Shannon, what is the biggest mistake clubs are making when it comes to content and production strategy? Yeah, we've talked through some of them, and I think I'll boil it down to one thing. They falsely assume that going digital is just taking what they do in person and filming it and putting it online. And it's, it, it, it's a different 
business strategy. It's a different content strategy. That's why my team exists. It is, I mentioned earlier, you know, it is looking at what you do in person and doing it well. But the best example I can give is, you know, when I'm teaching a group in front of me, I see how you're reacting and I can riff on the fly and make it work. And we we all leave feeling successful. But if I'm doing live stream and I can't see you or I'm doing video on demand, I've gotta learn how to break through that fourth wall and give you that same feeling of community and connection that I did in person. And that's a different skill. So we even as part of our expertise and what we do as your partners, we help train your team to do that, whether that's a personal trainer or a group fitness instructor, it's some of the best in the business that know how to break through that fourth wall and make it feel just like you were in the room. So yeah, it's making that commitment to trusting. You've got to put a little bit more effort into it. Don't just go to your group fitness manager and go, okay, so we're going online. We're going to be filming that next week. I've cleared this budget and I've bought some lights. You get your team together and let's make this happen. Yeah. So it's, you know, I'd say from the owner operator part, it's understanding that that is going to be a big ask of the talent of the group fitness manager. So you need to invest in her or him. You need to give them the time to find the talent, train the talent, rehearse with the talent. This is a, this is a good investment and it's something that is going to fundamentally change your business and, and get you more people than you ever imagined. Because, you know, the 15% that have been working out in the club with us, I, you know, I call them my front row frowners, right? They'd be there if you were there or not. And we've all been trying to get beyond that 15%. This hybridization model is how you do it. They get to try it at home and with no pressure, no no eyeballs on them. That is the best thing in the world. Like this two-way teaching on Zoom, forget it. Turn them all off. They want to be anonymous so they can give it a shot. But anyway, I could go on and on and on. Just give your group fitness managers and your personal training managers, those that are going to be your talent, give them the space and grace and the resources to do this really, really well. Uh, and, and it'll pay you back tenfold. I love this whole conversation, Shannon. We've just unpacked that in such a beautiful way. And um, thank you so much for your insight and okay. recommendations. That, that is just so helpful. And Ashley, I'd love to circle back to you. Are there any final remarks or any common mistakes you're seeing your customers making as it pertains to the marketing aspect of this? Yeah, and maybe just not even marketing um, specifically, but I was going to key in off what you said earlier that it, like makes you sweat. And that is not a unique feeling whatsoever. This is certainly, it's a different core competency and it's not instilled in current clubs. And so, but that's okay. Right. And so I think that's why it's so key to choose truly a partner. And that's why we position ourselves as partner. And that's why we really resource these services is to, you know, leapfrog you ahead from learning this, from learning those content mistakes and certainly learning like all of our marketing automated journeys. Um, I know that Adam loves to talk about our journeys, but they are important. And it's because we've dialed in from the last four years of Members not only need to know how to download the app, but they need to know what the content and product offering is. They need to learn how to use the app itself. They need to learn where to go support. Very similar to, you know, a premium front desk experience. And, and I think that's, you know, not to say mistakes, but more so that it, it's important to think about all those touch points in this business, whether it be content or the marketing communication or how the platform is talking to your ecosystem. Um, but it's, it's not as hard as you think, you know, and it's, and we've definitely tackled about every which problem that can arise when launching in this business. And I think the only other comment too, is it's really been an amazing year to see COVID reduce that barrier to entry too. So what used to be a six to eight week onboarding session is now live and one to two, everything included. And so I think that's really what we've learned and worked hard to is understand well, with the change in society and our closures and things, what became critical to have at launch and what became a nice to have as you can build up to it. Great point, Ashley. The time frame got moved up, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was an interesting March and April, I will say. <laughs> right. Kudos to you and your team. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, yeah. Janet and Ashley. And Adam, I'd like to circle back to you, sir, give you the final word here. If someone is listening to this episode and they want to get in touch with you and your sales team, what is the best way for them to do that? Well, they can certainly hit our website and uh, televideo.com and learn about us. And I would say if you're considering hybridization, which we think every fitness operator should be, I would say certainly uh, take a look at the website, make it a, make a critical business decision to go ahead and say, this is going to be part of our business. It's going to be an and not an or. Uh, as Shannon said earlier, get your team on board, get them excited, get them on board and make them part of the process. And then thirdly, call us and we'll partner with you and we can certainly make it something that is uh, great for your business and will help you thrive for the long term. Love that. 
get the buy-in from your team, and then call Adam's team. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you all so much for tuning in today to hear the value proposition for going digital with IntelliVideo. Tune in January 15th for our next episode of The Value Proposition. And to show we walk the talk at the Fitness Business Podcast, all the resources and links for today's show can be found at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com, adding value to our FBP family. Until next month, what you leave behind is not what is engraved in stone monuments, but what is woven into the lives of others. See you next time.